these are the real teachings. Let's read the Quran from the source in the right context. Once you read it in the right context, you can see and we can see that Quran does not stand for extremism and terrorism and violence. It stands for peace, unity and justice for all. Oh, sorry, can you repeat that again? Those of us who are not Muslim yes. are here to be one Muslim. Okay, sure, sure. So the question is that uh, those people who are not here and who may resist Islam and Muslims, how do we reach out to them with the peaceful message of Islam, right? So it's really important. You know, we may have in this room, I'm not sure, maybe 150 people, right? And you came of your own choice because of your sincerity to learn, not from fake and fox, right? But from real Muslims. So now you can go back to your families, to your neighbors, and to your colleagues. And you can say to them, you know, we went to the mosque, we met the Muslims. And Muslims are good people. Yeah. Hopefully you can say that, right, at least. Yeah, number one. Number two, you can take some brochures, you can take a copy of the Quran, and you can say to them, this, these are the real teachings of Islam. Just like you have Bible, Old New Testament, these are the real teachings. Let's read the Quran from the source in the right context. Once you read it in the right context, you can see and we can see that Quran does not stand for extremism and terrorism and violence. It stands for peace, unity, and justice for all. So I and the Muslims, we cannot reach out to 330 million people, but the people who are here, our dear pastor from the pulpit, our law enforcement officers to your own department, all the Muslims here and our fellow Americans, our brothers and sisters, to your colleagues and neighbors, you all are and should become the peaceful ambassadors of humanity to your fellow Americans. And that's how we can reach out. Yes. yes. Yes, sister, go ahead. Hi, I was wondering about the sects of Islam, like the Sunni and the Shia. What are the key differences between them? Are there regional differences? And then here in America, do people see, do Muslim people see the differences equally as they do in areas where there are more Muslim people? Okay, wonderful. You know, as I always say and joke, that no open house is complete if that question does not come in, right? I'm serious, by the way. Sunni and Shia, I'm glad that you asked the question. But don't take it as the last question. Ask more questions. Now, first and foremost, when Muhammad, peace be upon him, when he was alive, he was both the, both the head of the state and also a prophet. But after he passed away in the year 632, Muslims have to appoint a new head of the state. Not a new, not a new prophet, by the way, because the Quran says, in chapter 33, verse number 40, that Muhammad, peace be upon him, he is the last and the final messenger. So Muslims have to appoint a new head of the state. So majority of the Muslims, they nominated a person, his name was Abu Bakr, as the very first caliph or the head of the state. A minority of the Muslims, they want to go with someone who was the cousin and also the son-in-law of Muhammad, peace be upon him. His name was Ali. It so happened that Abu Bakr was nominated as the very first caliph or the head of the state. So some people, they started to call themselves as the Sunnis or those who are following the path of the Sunnah, means the example of Muhammad, peace be upon him. Those who followed Ali, they called themselves as the Shia or the party of Shia. But at the end of the day, it's important. The names are not based upon the Quran or given by Muhammad, peace be upon him. Those names are based upon labels which were given by humans. The only label that God gave for the followers of Islam in chapter 22, verse number 78 of the Quran, is the label of a Muslim. So if I am walking on the street and somebody stops me and say, you know, Sabil, uh, are you a Sunni or a Shia? I say that I am a... Yes, that's the label. There are more things in common between all the Muslims than the different sects of Christianity. For example, all the Muslims in the world, we believe in the same concept of God. Means we say that God is only one. 
He is eternal and the creator, loving, merciful, powerful creator. So all the Muslims unanimously behold to the fundamentals, the concept of God. Unlike our Christian brothers and sisters, as you know, my dear pastor, right? The Jehovah's Witnesses, they don't believe in Trinity. They don't take the divine divinity of Christ. But maybe yourself, maybe our Catholic and Protestant brothers and sisters, they believe in Trinity. When it comes to the scriptures, all the Muslims are unanimously holding to one version of the Quran in Arabic. And even the Chigo, you will have the same one Quran in the Arabic language. But the Catholics may have 70, 73 books in their Bible. The Protestants may have 66 books in their Bible. Uh, the Greek Orthodox, they have 78 books in the Bible. But all the Muslims, we are united with only one version of the Quran in the Arabic language. Number three, when Muslims pray, we pray in the same direction. Compared to the church, may have different services, different ways of services, but when you go to any mosque around the world, we face the same direction. So if I'm going to ask my friend John, which direction do we face, by the way, when we pray? Towards Mecca, right? So how do we find out where Mecca is from here? There is an app for it. Right? So the point I'm trying to make is, if I go to Japan or Nepal or anywhere else, I would be feeling at ease because I know they will, they will be praying the same way as I'm praying here in Houston. So all Muslims again are united on the fundamentals of Islam. So the point is that, yes, there may be some minute differences. Our Shia brothers and sisters, they believe in the continuation of the caliphate in the family of Muhammad, peace be upon him, right? But when they pray, they may hold the hands here compared to holding the hands here. It's not a big difference. These are our minute differences. But then your question can be, how come there is some fighting and friction between them? It's again a human problem. Just like, unfortunately, our Catholic brothers and sisters, our Protestant brothers and sisters, they have been having a hundred year war in the Middle Ages, you know, killing each other, unfortunately. Not because the Bible is saying that, but because of their own shortcomings. In the Crusaders, many Catholics they came and they butchered other sects. Not because of the Bible, because of their, of their own shortcomings. So if you see some two fractions of Muslims fighting over each other, it's not because of Islam, it's because of oil, greed, power, foreign forces, and human shortcomings. That is the reason Muslims are fighting. It's a human problem again. It's not an Islamic problem. So at the, yeah, so at the end of the day, at the end of the day, we say anyone who adheres to the fundamentals of Islam, the six beliefs, the five pillars, no other God besides one God, Allah and Muhammad is the messenger. We say to that person that you're not a Sunni or a Shia, we say that you are a Muslim. Yeah. Yes, sister, go ahead. Yeah. You want to translate? Okay, alhamdulillah. He wants to know how many years did um, Prophet Muhammad come after his Jesus. Okay, it's a really good question. How many years after Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him, Muhammad, peace be upon him, came? So Jesus, peace be upon him, he came about 600 years before Muhammad, peace be upon him. So Jesus was born historically in the year 3 BC. Muhammad, peace be upon him, he was born in the year 570 CE, approximately about 571 years, let's say 600 years. But the most important thing is, Jesus is mentioned in the Quran 25 times with respect and honor, and you'll be surprised to find out that there are miracles about Jesus mentioned in the Quran which are not mentioned in the New Testament. And one of the miracles is this. We believe that Mary, she was a virgin, when she became pregnant by God's power and miracle, and she gave birth to Jesus. But now she became really afraid that if she brings the baby to her people, they're going to accuse her, right? There were no DNA tests, no MRIs and ultrasound. She became really afraid. But then when she brought the baby to the people, they started to accuse her. How can you do such a nasty thing, you know, fornication, adultery? How can she, you know, no DNA test? She remained silent. She pointed to the baby Jesus, and baby Jesus, he started to speak. 
And you may be wondering, what did he say? Right? No. Jesus, peace be upon him, according to the Quran, chapter number 19, verse number 30, Jesus said that God has appointed me as a servant, as a slave of God, as Abdullah, as they say, right, in Arabic, as a, as a servant of God. And I am given a, a gospel, and I am given to be good to my mother, and to pray and to give charity as long as I live. And then the Quran says in many places that Jesus performed miracles, that he raised people from the dead. Yeah, surprised? That he gave eyesight to the blind, healed the sick, the lepers. But each single time God said, by the permission of God, by the will of God, by the power of God. God is repeating that so many times because God wants to make sure that the Muslims do not start worshipping Moses or Jesus or Muhammad, peace be upon him, just because they were doing miracles. And my dear pastor, you'll be surprised to find out. John chapter 5, verse number 30. Similarity, right? Again, Jesus said in Gospel of John chapter 5, verse number 30. I of myself, I cannot do anything. So Jesus is saying that his power is coming from the creator. So we Muslims, we say that we don't worship any human. We worship the creator of Jesus, Moses, and all of humanity and all of creation. So that in a nutshell is about Jesus. If you have any follow-up question, I would be more than happy, yes. Okay, fine. Okay, I think your sister over there, right? Yeah. Uh, I was told by one of the sisters that uh, males, can marry for, or females can marry for different women, and that it's okay. So that has to be the last question, okay. <laughs> Marrying for wives. All right. Remember the police is in here. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Maybe we can have them give a tour of the mosque, right? Have you seen the mosque? <laughs> no. All right. So the question is uh, about four wives. All right. It's really important. Before Islam was reintroduced in Arabia, people used to have unrestricted number of wives. No limitation, no responsibility, no restriction. But after Islam came in the 7th century, Islam restricted the number of wives up to four and gave proper responsibility to the husband. So it says in the Quran, chapter number four, verse number three, marry two, three, or four, but if you cannot do justice, marry only one. It's really important, by the way. So, so, so the really important point over here is God has given in certain situation permission in those land, in those countries where it is allowed. It's really important. Over here it's not allowed, right? So anywhere it is allowed, Saudi Arabia for example, a Muslim man has the permission to marry up to four, but if he cannot do justice, justice has to be total justice to each one of the wives up to four. But if we cannot, Quran says, marry only one. But then you'll be surprised to find out that Islam did not introduce polygamy or polygyny. Almost all the scriptures of the past, they, they encourage or they permit unrestricted polygamy. Almost all the prophets of the Old Testament, they had more than one wife. Moses has more than one. So did David. So did... Uh, you know, Sol you know, in fact, King Solomon, by the way, it says in 1 Kings chapter 11, verse number 2, 3, and 4. No, I have not memorized the Bible, Pastor. <laughs> right? So it says in 1 Kings chapter 11, verse number 2, 3, and 4, that Solomon had 700 wives. Right? And God did not say anything against Solomon for marrying that many, by the way. Even Jesus, peace be upon him, he did not say anything against polygamy of the Old Testament. So what I'm saying is, what the Quran says, in certain situations, marry, you can marry two, three, or four. But let's look at the life in the USA. According to Chicago Tribune, a typical American male has in the lifetime at least seven extramarital, premarital affairs. Seven, average. I'm not looking at you, by the way, right? Average. 
and then there is no responsibility by the way a man can have intimate relationship with a girl with a lady and then if the baby is born he can go scotch free and she has to raise the child or oh, there is no law there is no restrictions no obligation right besides some child care and what not but islam says that if you are going to have any intimate relationship with a person take 100% responsibility and we have seen unfortunately when there are 40 million households single parent households what is the outcome what is the statistic most of the time according to the statistics a child of a single parent household they are more prone to be unemployed they have a lower iq they are into drugs and gangs and racism so they are at a disadvantage so what quran says what islam says is that in certain situations marry up to four but if you cannot do justice marry only one and that is the justice of islam in polygamy yes another fact okay very very good god's power be to you yes wonderful all right so i think uh, if you have any more questions what we can do is myself and the muslims would be here inshallah one to one you can ask any question i would be here i am leaving my flight is at 4 so i would be leaving around maybe 2:30 ish right or maybe about oh i have to leave now <laughs> No, I would it at 4:45 by the way, right? So I would be here a short time. So again, may God guide us, may God bless us, may He help us to live as brothers and sisters for the betterment of humanity. Thanks a lot for coming over here. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. الله اكبر الله اكبر اشهد ان لا اله الا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلا حي على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا 